I killed that. Ah, yes, St. Barnabas, my former boarding school, where they taught a boy to be a man. Of course, in those days, education was far more involved in dominance and suppression. Here I have a trophy from one of my many hunts. And here we have Scrabble. Mind game. You had to learn to keep the weak and the vulnerable below you lest you become the bottom of the pile. And you did not want that. Ask Carter Chessington if you don't believe me. Jolly good fun. Jolly good fun. This fine baroque chess piece truly Gentleman's game. Ah, you cheating bastard! I see you've noticed my tiny house ornament. Oh, it's one of my favorite pieces in the whole house. What I like to do is hold it like this and try and see all of the little people. But if they don't come out, they pay the price. And this here, I must show you. Possibly my favorite piece in the whole house. This wood-burning stove comes from the 14th century. Little pigs! Little pigs! Don't you want to come out? Magnificent piece. Temperature within is so high. You could burn just around anything you could think. I'll teach you not to pay your taxes. Ha <laughs> ha! from bones. Yeah, I appear to have fumbled. In fact, one time, that was several times, but one time in particular, a pigeon flew in via the chimney. Poor thing must have been stuck, you see, somewhere along the chimney way. You could hear the poor thing for hours. <coughs> Bedlam, definitely. So I did the only humane thing I could. Lit a fire. <coughs> Horrible sound. Smell was dreadful. But the bird was delicious. Sorry, what did you say? I know there have been many questions for many years revolving around my family's money and wealth. Now, I don't believe for one second you can honestly call selling a few hundred thousand planes to the Germans in 1938 war profiteering. And in fact, due to the overall poor quality of our we uh, ended up costing more German lives. And, you know. And of course, I'm firm friends with many members of the royal family. In fact, I received a knighthood from Her Majesty herself. I'll tell you something not many people know of Her Majesty. 
a wonderful sense of humour to life. In fact, she loves pranks. She once invited Jeremy to booking a bats under the guise of him receiving a night of the most ludicrous wife while he was in the night of the day. Anyhow, he arrives at the palace with his loved ones and small children as wife, and he got down on one knee and Elizabeth was there. And we all jumped out from behind the curtains. Ah, Jeremy Peel, you got out and chased him off the ground. Tremendous. Tremendous. I never particularly warmed to Camilla. In fact, she caused all kinds of frustration with my own marriage. It must have been sometime in 1997 or so. She wants this, she wants that, and call me at all hours of the morning, asking questions about brake cables and speed restrictions and things. I said, Charles, man, for God's sake, focus on your marriage. Or your affair, one of the two. But pick one, and the rest will work itself out. Well, of course it did, in the manner of speaking. This keeps the socialists at bay. <laughs> yes. Philip! Now there's a tremendously funny man. Ah, oh, we've had many of now. Wonderful driver. This way, come on, quickly now, up these stairs. Do be careful. However, ascending, as this staircase is particularly steep, tremendously easy for one to lose one's balance. Pull all the way to the bottom. Break one's neck. No one would even hear you, so just be careful. Ah! Uh, Deary me, you appear to have caught me just taking my uh, heart medication there. Yeah, we've got to keep the old ticker going. <laughs> uh, you Spilled quite a large portion of my heart medication on my lapel. This is the east wing of the house, both doubling as a guest room for when the Duke of Kent comes to stay, and of course, my library. Fine selection. Of course, several of these works come from my dearly departed late wife. A lot of namby pamby wishy washy third wave feminist drivel, Ned Winderson, etc., etc. However, this, although I've never read it, I did see the BBC drama several times back. Tremendous. Of course, one of my favourite writers of all time. The Marquise de Sard. If I had to say just one by the Marquise, it would, of course, be the immortal classic. 120 Days of Sodom. I mean, can you imagine it? This one, another one of my favourites, I read it over and over again. Lady Chatterley's Lover, the tale of a man of wealth and power being cuckolded by a rapscallion, poor born wretch. A dreadful business. I wouldn't stand for it. And I didn't. Very funny. Ah. 
Now I borrowed this from a friend. Who was it? Of course, again, do bear in mind the steepness of the stairs. Very easy to fall, as I reminded Beatrice many, many times. So this is the master suite, old oak finish. Look at this beautiful four-poster Victorian bed. The bed sheets, soft Indian linen, featuring not only the exact number, but the faces of each and every stag I have murdered. Do be careful, this mirror is haunted. Over here, this, like this. Ah, yes. My daughter, Persephone, my eldest. This was taken the day she graduated with first class honours from Cambridge University. She later became a civil rights lawyer. We haven't spoken since this day. But it was the second proudest day of my life. Following a day at Ascot in 2004, when I won £5,000 on Barney Gumble. The odds were terrible. I wore medals here. This one, known as the Purple Heart, awarded for bravery. This one, the Yellow Half Circle, also awarded for bravery. This one, the Travelator. This one, in particular, is my favourite. This was awarded for killing the most amount of men who deserted us. Yes, the cowardice medal. That's why I have that. This medal I am particularly proud of. It comes from a charity I set up with one Sir Jimmy Savile. Uh, at the time, we didn't know. We didn't know. Ah, my dear wife, Beatrice, you left us too soon. How many times did I tell you to watch the stairs? Many, many times I said this to you. You might fall and break your neck, but you didn't listen. Why didn't you listen, Beatrice? Why did you have to die in such unsuspicious circumstances. Come this way, we'll head back down through the courtyard and I'll show you my impressive wine cellar. Oh, I just remembered. Lolita. It was Prince Andrew's. Oh, I must return it. Very firm friends with Andrew. Such a wonderful chap. Been to many social functions and occasions with him. I will not have a crossword said against him. He did what? Well, I, I wouldn't know anything about that. So the wine cellar is um, this way. Jesus Christ. Oh, for Winchester. Lord Michael Joseph Allen, 13th Earl of Shropshire, my immortal nemesis, communist sympathiser, man who believes he can come into anyone's home when they're not there, but their wife is. And take what doesn't belong to it. Well, I've got news for you, old chap. Lord Humbert Ascot will not stand for it any longer. Loose! And that's how we deal with those types around here. And around here, 
Oh, my stable. I locked the bloody thing. You to do a job for an Irishman. He was stealing, slurring. Quicksilver, the fastest horse known to mankind, and my particular favourite equine beast. Barney Gumble. Come here, Barney. Have your dinner. There's nothing more erotic than a hungry horse. Don't you agree? And of course, the pièce de résistance of my humble stately home, the wine cellar. Now, these stairs are particularly precarious, so do mind your stairs. Of course, it's always good to stay in shape, stay one step ahead of the old competition, you know. Come on then, old chap. Gentleman's rules. I dub thee Sir Morris Chestnut. Ah, I see you've noticed my fine collection of many, many, many vintage Bordeaux. Why don't we pick one at random? What do you say? Could be a laugh. Why, how about this? Ah, yes. A three mills Merlot. In fact, I once owned three mills. A very fine Merlot. A good year as well. 2017. Here, why don't you hold on to this? One of my favourite aspects of the house in general is the brickwork. Tremendously dense bricks retain sound so well why one can hardly hear a sound. Jolly.